Okay, so for this tofu salmon, we just need one block of firm tofu. All we're gonna do is just drain this. I like using my tofu press. I'll leave a link in the description below. Thing works really great, but we just need to drain it for 15 minutes to a half an hour, whatever method you use. If you're just stacking some books up on it, maybe give it about a half an hour just to allow it to drain a little bit more. We want it to be fairly drained, not crushed. Now, I know I've done this recipe before. I've made tofu salmon and it came out really good, surprisingly really good. But just like with making any recipe, we've learned some things and I wanna apply those things that we've learned into this recipe. And we're also gonna use Kenji Lopez's technique for searing salmon in recipe. I'm really excited about this one. Okay, so now the tofu's nice and pressed. It feels pretty good. A lot of the liquid's out. We're gonna kind of turn this into a fish. Now, the way that I'm thinking about doing that to get the texture that we wanna get is I'm gonna use rice paper and methyl cellulose. You can probably play with it and test it yourself just to see what is going to work similar to this. Uh, but the first thing, let's cut our tofu into some salmon shapes. All I'm gonna do is kind of cut mostly like an angle, like just think of like a door stop. You know, we're not gonna go, we're not looking for a super authentic shape. We just wanna get kind of close. But the rice paper is gonna be the fat lines in between the salmon. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go at kind of an angle. We're gonna go at just a slight angle and we're just gonna add some slices into the tofu pretty close, probably about a quarter inch, not all the way through, but a, most of the way through. And if you're nervous about the way that you're cutting, you can add some stops. You know, just two chopsticks would be enough. Okay, and these look really good. I'm really excited about the way these are coming out. So now at this point, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our rice paper sheet and I'm just gonna brush it. Now the rice paper sheet is dry. Uh, it's not, this stuff's not gonna stick to the rice paper sheet, but we just kind of want some methyl cellulose, like the powder to be on the sheet. It's gonna act as little kind of like adhesives, kind of the same way I was saying, like maybe like a starch would work. And then we're just gonna brush the top of the tofu with a little bit of methyl cellulose as well. Uh, that's gonna help give it just, you know, a slight skin to it. So now that we have this brushed, all I'm gonna do is use the lines of the rice paper sheet. And we're gonna do, you know, two squares of rice paper and slice it, you know, or you might just kind of perforate it to where you can pull off a nice slice, but you want a nice even slice to come off. And then once you have that slice, we're just gonna kind of sink it in to the tofu. And it's okay if a little extra hangs off, we'll utilize that, we'll kind of wrap it around to just give this a nice skin. So let's just go ahead and repeat this. As you move down on the tofu, uh, you're gonna probably wanna make your, your strips a little thinner. So I'm just gonna go from the two squares to one whole square, so it's gonna be a little, thinner strip on the rice paper. So let's move this out of the way. Now we're gonna make our marinade. Now the marinade is what's gonna make it pink and give it flavor. In the last video, all we did was just pour beet juice over it. This time we're gonna make a full flavor broth to kind of try to incorporate it all at once. So we're gonna start off, I have a half of a beet. I used this beet in the last video. We're just gonna chop this up. This is gonna give us the color that we want. Okay, so now all we're gonna do is just add our half of a, it's a half of a large beet into our blender. I'm using a high powered blender because I want this to be blended pretty smooth. I want this to be almost like beet juice, but with all of these other liquid and all of these other in like ingredients in it. Now we're gonna add a teaspoon of caper brine along with a teaspoon of capers themselves. I'm gonna toss in the ends of two pieces of dill along with the juice of about half of a lemon mildly squeezed, you don't wanna squeeze it too much, otherwise you get like the really kind of like bitter parts of the lemon. You just want like the sweet end of the juice, really. Now we just need for the brine, for the flavoring, you just need a half of a sheet of nori. I'm not gonna throw in a full sheet. I don't want a ton of green nori flakes in there, just the half of the sheet. I think that'll be enough to kind of impart some flavor. I think it's gonna work really well. We're gonna do one teaspoon of our Brightlands olive oil. We just need a quarter cup of water and a few big three finger pinches of salt. Then all we need to do is just pop our lid on and blend. You're gonna probably wanna pulse it first and then blend it down. We're gonna wanna get this blended into a very fine paste. Okay, so this smells amazing. The texture is perfect. It's exactly what I was looking for. And it has a really nice seafood flavor. It might be a little bit too much for salmon because we want some you know, maybe some saltier or sweeter tastes, but we're gonna get that later. For now, we just wanna impart this kind of fishy flavor into it along with the color. So I'm just gonna pour this mixture through a strainer. So we're gonna drop our tofu into our baking dish. I'm gonna kinda like 
I might press them together to see if maybe it's gonna hold them a little bit tighter, like if there's enough room to do that. So we're gonna pour the mixture over the tofu. We're just gonna cover this up. I'm gonna throw it in the fridge at least a half an hour. I'm gonna do this for about, I'm thinking an hour. I think an hour is gonna be a really good resting time. Let's come back in an hour. Did you know that around 70% of olive oils in supermarkets don't meet industry standards? That's exactly why I wanna tell you a little bit about today's sponsor, Brightland. Brightland's oils are bottled fresh with absolutely no preservatives or fillers. And with Brightland, you know the exact types of olives and fruits that are used and the year of the harvest of every product. Each one of their products is designed with a specific pairing in mind. Awake is robust and grassy, which is perfect for soups, breads, and pastas. And Alive is smooth and nutty, which is perfect for salads, greens, and dips. And today they sent me the Essentials Capsule, which is awesome. It features the Brightland Duo, the Wake and Live Olive Oils, and they pair it with their Rapture and Parasol Vinegars. The capsule is the perfect foursome of essentials to complete and round out any kitchen. And these could be great gift options. It's so good. Just a really nice taste. And then the Rapture Balsamic fits perfectly with the olive oil. Mm. Oh my gosh. Their raw vinegars are double fermented with fresh California fruit, so that way you get that really nice fruit forward zing. Try Brightland now, get 10% off when you click the link in my description box and get your first essentials capsule. Get your olive oils with the vinegars in the essentials capsule. You are going to love it. You're going to love Brightland just as much as I do. Always a fan of your olive oils. Okay, so these have sat. I have a feeling they look really good. They're completely covered in the brine. So now at this point, all we have to do is just kind of wash away this top layer of brine. Just dip this down into some water, and then we're gonna pull it out. We only wanna do that just to wash away this excess beetroot material. We don't want all of that. So let's just dip this down into the water. Okay, so right now these look pretty good. I'm honestly a little disappointed on the way that the, the binding, like the flakiness of it kind of stuck together. It didn't stick the way that I wanted it to, but I still think it's gonna work out. We're gonna keep moving on. Now we're gonna actually gonna put a layer of skin over top of this. We're gonna flavor our skin with about a tablespoon of soy sauce. We're gonna do a tablespoon of rice vinegar, a few drops of liquid smoke, drop in about a half of a cup of water, and then we just want this skin to have enough fat in it so that way it can crisp up and be more like actual salmon skin. So I'm gonna drop in a tablespoon of my Brightland's olive oil. And now all we're gonna do is take our nori sheets. Now I'm gonna probably be able to use that one half of the nori sheet that I had. And we're just gonna drop half of the nori sheet onto the salmon here. What I'm gonna do is just another rice paper sheet. We're gonna dip it into our broth here. And we're just gonna let this hydrate up. We want this to be very hydrated. We're just gonna lay it over the top of our salmon. Just make sure that it's pressed down into the nori sheet and it should really kind of start to look like a skin. It has a really neat look. And make sure it's pressed down around the sides. This is just for now, because we're actually gonna slice these, I think. I'm just gonna kind of roll this under as well. Okay, they, I mean, they look pretty good. I'm, I'm still not super sold on them yet. I think, I think the texture and everything is gonna come out really nice. I think the flavor is gonna be really nice. So let's toss these in the freezer. I'm just gonna put, you know, just a simple piece of foil over top, you know. Toss them in the freezer until they're frozen, semi-frozen, 30, 40 minutes, not frozen all the way through. And then we'll cook them. Okay, so now we just need to make Kenji Lopez's miso marinade for our salmon. This is gonna come out so good. We're gonna start off with two tablespoons of white miso paste, one tablespoon soy sauce, one tablespoon of sake, two tablespoons of our Brightland olive oil, we do two tablespoons of brown sugar, now Kenji just uses white sugar, but personally I think brown sugar with salmon just goes so much better. So that's why for our tofu salmon, we're doing some brown sugar. And all we need to do is just whisk this mixture together. It should be fairly thick. It's not gonna be like a very watery mixture. And now at this point we have our two mostly frozen, they're not all the way through, but mostly frozen tofu salmons. I'm gonna chop one of these in half. Oh, that looks, that came out perfect actually. Actually, I'm gonna chop both of them in half because I think they'll both be good that way. I think it's gonna go really, really nice. Now what I'm gonna do is just drop these in our miso brown sugar sweet salty glaze here. We're gonna make sure that these get really nice and coated. We're gonna let these sit for about a half an hour so that way they get that marinade in there. Then all we're gonna do is heat up a skillet or a heavy duty pan, non-stick pan. We don't want these to stick with some more of our olive oil. Get that nice and hot. We're gonna heat it on the skin side down first. So the side with the rice paper and the nori sheet. 
Get that nice and crispy, flip it over a few times. You can throw some fresh capers in there, a little bit of salt and pepper on top after it's cooked for just a minute. And just look at the way these are cooking. Look at the way they come together. This is an upgrade to your normal tofu salmon. If you've ever had a tofu salmon, this takes it up a whole other level of tofu salmons. This came out pretty much how I thought it would. I mean, it looks, it seems pretty nice. Now I know a lot of people don't eat the skin, but in this scenario, I think it's okay. And I think it's gonna have a lot of flavor, especially from that Kenji Lopez marinade for his salmon. Mm, that's really nice. Oh my gosh. The rice paper with that nori sheet made an incredible skin. Mm. It has some sweetness to it. There's a bit of salty, saltiness to it from like the marinade, but all together, the texture is really nice. It kind of flakes apart really nice. Mm. If you do work on this, try out some starch, try out some other things maybe other than the rice paper. I think the rice paper is really key, but like maybe like thin noodles might work as like a fat replacement. Like the really thin like starch noodles, those might be good. Or like the cellulose noodles, like where they use like um, tapioca noodles, those might be pretty good too. But I think this is the right track to get like that flakiness and that like mouth feel. It's good though, it's really good.